Okay, Mr. Snyder here with the next tutorial for Audacity audio editing program. The last tutorial, again, we went to File, Save Project, Save Project As. Don't just hit Save Project because then you're, cop you're saving over top of your previous one. You don't want to do that. Save Project As. Again, this is not an audio file. The interesting thing about when you make a project file is you're not copying all the media into that project file. So it makes the project files very small. It's just a bunch of instructions for the computer. So you're not taking up a whole bunch of space by making multiple project files. Okay, so it's not copying the content. And that goes the same for video programs as well. It's only cut saving the instructions. Click OK. Okay, I'm going to call it number six. So let's start with a new version today. So we can always go back to the previous version that we were doing. And it's a .aup, which is identifying this file as a, an Audacity project file. Click Save. Good. I've got, I'm ready now. I'm now editing on version 6. And then the other thing we did is we cleaned up all of our clips. So now what we've got, if I just take mute off of there, and let's zoom in a bit, you can see that all of our clips now are nice and clean. All the uh, excess audio at the start and the end of each clip is gone. So now what we're ready to do is the next step, and that's to deal with the volume level of the clips. And what we want to do is get the levels so that, number one, they're in the proper range, that they're not distorting, and number two, that they are all sort of equal in their volume so that we can hear both voices equally well in the commercial. So let's start with the male voice up here. And I'm going to just play it. Now, when I do you'll notice this meter up here, okay? It's got a speaker. That means it's the output or playback level of a clip when I'm playing it, okay? And this meter, if you notice, if you look carefully, you'll see it has minus 57. If your meter looks a little bit different, you can grab the end. And if it doesn't show enough detail, grab the end of it and just drag it out. Drag it so that you can see minus three. We wanna see the minus three. So get yours so it looks similar to this. Now, I'm going to hit play, watch the meter, and this is going to tell us how loud or what the volume is of this particular clip. Watch up here. Hello, dear. Oh, no. Oops, let's mute the female clip. Play it again. Hello, dear. I'm making dinner tonight. Bacon and tomato sandwiches. Now, what you'll notice, see this little gray line here? What that's marking is the peak level of this clip, the loudest, highest point of the audio in this clip that I've just played. And it's showing me how loud the peak or loudest point is. Now, zero is the highest we ever want to go, and that represents the top of each of the waveforms. If our audio goes above zero, it's going to start to slice it off and cause what's called distortion. So what we want is our audio to never get to zero or above. But I like to have us have a little bit of space. And I'm going to suggest that we all keep our audio peak levels at minus three. Now, what do these numbers mean? That's decibels. The unit for audio is called decibels. D-E-C-I-B-E-L-S. Decibels. Okay, so we're measuring the audio level in decibels. Zero is up here. Anything below zero is less volume. And that's the area we want to stay. Why don't we show the positive side? Because we never want to be there. We always want to be below zero and we want to peak. In our case, we're going to peak everything at minus three. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, play the clip again. Let's see where it's peaking. Hello, dear. I'm making dinner tonight. So you can see it's peaking above minus three. I want to set that as my upper limit for the loudest points of the audio. Notice when I play the audio, it doesn't just play one level. It varies because our voice is very. Watch again. Hello, dear. I'm making dinner tonight. You see how the audio meter will bounce around? That's just reflecting the different volumes of the voices as we play them. <clears throat> but it's the minus three that we want to limit things to. Notice also when I play this clip, not only does the meter show us the level numerically where it goes to as far as a peak, but also notice that it's colors, right? We have green down here, which green means go. It's good. 
it starts to get into orange and then once it gets close to zero very close to zero it hits red the phrase we like to use is if you see red you're dead orange is good red is not if you see red you're dead so watch watch the colors now of the meter not just the numbers hello dear i'm making dinner tonight See how it's green, yellow, orange, and then red at the very end. Again, we don't want to be in the red. So the red is kind of an indicator visually, hey, my audio is too high. Hello, dear. I'm making dinner tonight. Um, so here we go. So let's select this clip. And we want to reduce the level so it's at minus 3 instead of very close to 0. And then I'm going to go to Effects, Amplify. Now there's two settings here. This is kind of saying where it's at. It's just below zero at minus close to seven, point seven rather, decibels. DB is the short form. I want to give it a new peak amplitude. In other words, what does that mean? I want to limit it to minus three. Again, it's a negative number because I'm going to keep it below zero. Just like a number line back in grade school, we had positive numbers and negative. Audio, we work with negative numbers. Everything is below zero. So I've told the program now to do not let the audio of this clip go any higher than minus three decibels. And in doing so, it's actually going to have to reduce the audio level of this clip by 2.3 decibels. So let me just do that again. Let me enter zero. You notice it's 0.7 is where the amplification is, almost up to zero. And then I'm going to reduce this to minus 3. And see what it does? It says I have to bring down this audio clip by 2.3 decibels in order that to stop it from going beyond minus 3. And then click OK. Bam. Saw, saw what happened there? Let me do that again. Watch the waveform when I enter that value. Command Z. The clip is selected. Effect. Amplify. Okay, again, I'm going to limit it to going no higher than minus 3 decibels. Now, when I hit OK, watch what happens to the amplitude of this audio waveform. Bam. The higher the waveform, the louder the sound. And that's that was too loud. Now we've got some space. Let me just make this a little bigger. Now we've got some space between the top loudest portion of a clip and when it's going to hit distortion up here in zero. Okay, that's called headroom. I've got a little bit of headroom, actually, three decibels of headroom before it'll start to distort. Let's play it now and let's watch what the meter does. It, sh it will limit all the audio now at minus three decibels. Hello, dear. I'm making dinner tonight. See how that works? So I've told it where to limit it to, and then it says, okay, well, then this is what I have to do with the audio. I have to bring it up or down to get it to that point. Now, let me just for fun, that clip is still selected. Let me go to my effects, amplify, and let's say I want it to go to five units, positive five. Oh, it's going to amplify my audio by eight decibels. Remember, we had to take audio out or reduce the level. In this case, I'm really pumping it up because I want to get into dis distortion. In this case, this program won't let me do it. It says, no, nope, you're not going past zero. So it won't let me do it. Okay, so if it did, this waveform would touch up here and also squish the tops of all of the waveform, and that's called distortion. We don't want that. We want this 3 decibel headroom between the highest portions of the waveform and the zero point above and also down here. Now, we would do the next clip. I'm going to select it, but remember, effects, amplify, and again, you want to limit it to minus 3. I'll do one more minus three decibels. I want this to peak at minus three decibels. It's going to reduce this audio waveform by 2.3 decibels. Click OK. Watch the waveform as I do it. Let me move this out of the way. See, now it's down lower. And hey, look, now they're starting to look about the same height. Oh, this looks like it's probably really high because the really high volume because the uh, waveform is much taller. You're going to do all of them. Oh, this is very quiet down here. Look, it's very small. I don't know what that is. Let's play it. I'm thinking the bacon's done. So this is a case where the performer didn't want to be kind of as loud and out there because it's kind of like a defeat. I'm defeated now. My, I burned my bacon. 
Okay, so you're going to have to decide what level that should be at. Maybe it shouldn't be at minus 3, maybe minus 6, or maybe minus 9. You're going to make that decision based on listening and what sounds right. Okay, now what I did want to show you over here is the female clip. So let me bring this up. Let me bring the female clip down. Let's look at this first one. I'll take the solo off the male. I'll solo just the female. You can notice this waveform is much smaller than the male one up here that I've just set. So the level's likely to be much lower. In fact, it will be. So I'm going to click at the start. Let's watch our meter and let's see where this is peaking. What is the loudest portions of this waveform? Oh no, really? What are you making? Oh, the gray line is showing us it's just below minus nine. So it's lower than minus nine, probably minus 10. I want it to get up to minus three. So in my head, my little calculations, it's probably going to have to boost the audio to get here by about seven decibels. But the good thing is I don't have to do the math. I'm going to select that clip. I'm going to go to effect, amplify, and it's minus, almost minus 10. Okay, I want it to go to minus three and look what it did. It changed the value. Now I know this is confusing. Don't worry about this number so much. It's actually adding about seven units. Uh, but let's see what happens now. I'm going to click it and watch the waveform over here on the left. Click. Boom. It's much bigger. Is it loud enough? I don't know. Let's play it. Click. Let's watch our meter. Oh no, really? What are you making? Yeah, and it's peaking at minus three where we want it to. Okay, now that we've got the first clip of the female voice, you're going to do not only the male voices, you're going to do the female voices to try to set all of the clips so that they're peaking at minus three. And what that's going to do is give us a nice leveling effect of the volumes of the voices. So the male voice doesn't... <coughs> <coughs> So now we've done the first female voice and we've done a couple of the male voices. Your job will be to do the volume or the amplitude, the amplification of all of the clips on your timeline and get them all to peak at minus three. And then again, once that's done, what we're going to do then is actually start to shift things around. We're going to have to split this clip up and we'll start to arrange it so it's a commercial. Okay, now before I finish, I'm going to go file because I've made some major changes. File, save project, especially you, you'll have the whole thing done. Save project as, oh yeah, I'm not making an audio file. Okay, and I'm going to make this version 7. So I have now a version 7. If by chance version 7 becomes corrupt, I can always go back to 6 and just uh, repeat those processes. It won't take long if you had to redo it. It's unlikely, but just in case. If you have only one version of your project file, you're going to regret it because when it becomes due to submit, that's when all things go wrong. So multiple versions of project files, please. Change the volume of all your clips. Make them all peak at minus three, and we'll join you in the next tutorial for actually moving clips to create the commercial.